Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and this is gallium, 99.99% pure, 20 grams of it. it. Sounds illicit, but whatever. Perfectly legal metal to own. It's kind of an interesting metal in fact. Um, gallium, it's a liquid metal by the way at room temperature, well a little bit above, but we'll explain. It was originally called Eka aluminum. It was uh, found in 1875 by a guy with a really long name, and it's French, so let me see if I can try to pronounce it. If you're French, I hereby apologize. But I think it's Paul Emile Lecoq de Bouet Bouda. God, that's bad. Okay, I've just destroyed that person's last name. Uh, Paul Emile, I apologize. But boom, you discovered this a bazillion years ago, over 100 years ago, in fact. But here's the neat thing. It's melting point. Wait for it. 85.75, so basically 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 29.75, 76 degrees Celsius. Do you know what that means? That means that unlike uh, unlike many candies, this guy over here melts in your mouth and in your hand. Of course, you don't want to put it in your mouth, obviously, and you actually shouldn't put it in your hand. It's typically labeled as being non-toxic, and um, that's why we're still going to wear gloves with it. Why? Because it's just a safe idea when you're touching liquid metals. It doesn't matter if they're non-toxic. Just wear a glove. Does it really hurt you to wear a glove? You'll see people hold this in their hands all the time, and I'll probably get a dozen people that reply to my video saying, oh, you paranoid person, you can hold it in your hands. You know, I drank a glass of it last week, and I'm not dead yet. Whatever, don't do it. Um, interestingly enough, I'm also going to see what happens when I put it on aluminum, because it forms an amalgam with aluminum, and it'll eat right through aluminum. That's why you can't take this, like, in an airplane, for example. You can't take it in certain places that are um, heavily aluminum, um, because they will be very angry with you, and that's an understatement. So when you order this stuff, it typically comes from China, and it typically comes on a boat for this particular reason. So it takes forever to get here. But anyway, this is some good stuff. We're also going to do some other interesting things. So let's take a look and see what we can figure out with gallium. Number one, let's melt it. So I have a uranium glass dish. I'm using this because my petri dishes and beakers and stuff are all packed up right this moment. It's not because it's radioactive. But keep in mind, radiation always does have to make a nice uh, guest appearance in my um, shows. So let's move this out of the way. So here you go. It's a little depression glass piece. That's what I'm going to put this in. Again, it has nothing to do with the radiation. I just happen to be using green glass because I have it sitting around. And I have hot water in here to keep this warm so it'll be melted. So let's take a look. All right, so as you can see, probably, it's already liquid inside. Let's pour it out and see what we get. Pop the top off. I present the T-1000 Terminator. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's lovely. Let's get uh, some more heat to the um, thing here and see if we can get the rest of that out. That right there is your T-1000 Molten Metal Terminator. Come on. More? Mm, look at that. And as it cools, let me see if I can adjust this for you. As it cools, the inside of this is going to become hard as, well, metal. Anyway, so that is that. In fact, you can actually see the reflection of my hand off of it. It shines. See? I can already think of a million and one applications for this. But as you can see, that is liquid metal. Let's put it over top of the water so it continues to heat up. That is that is really, really neat. So, this is liquid metal, and it's not mercury. If anybody's like, is that mercury? Nope. Mercury will do the same thing, but mercury is a little more dangerous. It would be inappropriate for me, even with gloves like this, to just be playing with mercury like this. This is pretty safe if it touched my actual skin, like I wouldn't die or anything. Nothing bad would happen. Um, in fact, it's sometimes used inside of the body in certain medicines. I just don't personally recommend touching it because I don't think it's a smart idea to do. But look at that. Now, the thing I really wanted to do is apply some aluminum to this. Let's see what happens. But before that, let me just play with it for another minute or so. Let me move it up a little closer so you can see what it's doing. And what it's doing is it's getting it's actually hardening up. And the reason it's, oops, let me keep it in focus. The reason it's hardening up is simply because it's cooling. 
and it will make a neat pattern. All right. So anyway, let's take this and put it um, in some aluminum and see what happens. Okay, now I've already put a little too much aluminum inside of this gallium as I was playing around. As you can see, there's gallium underneath. Do you see the gallium underneath? Nice shiny gallium. So here's what we're going to do. Let's move some of this gallium out of the way. Move, 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 and we're going to put some aluminum in the middle. And here is a piece of aluminum that you can't see because I have it really narrow focus. But there, see the aluminum? Right down there in the middle. That's aluminum. This is gallium. So let's get you and get you mixed up in the gallium. And let's see what happens. Alrighty. Eat. Eat gallium. Eat. Eat monster. Eat metal monster. Eat the gallium. It must feed. Now if I just left this for like a while it would eventually melt into it. It doesn't really melt, it's actually amalgamating. But I'm trying to stir it so you get an idea. I want you to see it quickly. Now what's happening in here, it's hard to see, but the aluminum is becoming brittle. Notice there's already a hole in it. And what's happening is it's amalgamating. The two are mixing together to produce a single amalgam of both metals. An alloy, if you will. See? Look at that. The aluminum is now brittle. Just this little plastic thing is breaking it apart like it's nothing. Break, break, break. See? Look at that. It's just coming apart. Why? The gallium is sort of eating it, if you like. It's amalgamating it. Look at that. Now, when I heat this um, uh, gallium up, I should be able to extract and separate the gallium and the gallium aluminum alloy. That's part of what this darkness is you see around here. So I'm going to try to see if I can separate this in a couple of days. I'm also going to probably get some more gallium too because I don't have very much as you can see and it's a lot of fun. Now I tried to look at this under the microscope to see what it looked like and I only got one really good view. It's actually really hard to see this doing its... its um, uh, amalgamating action under the microscope, but I got one good view and I'm going to show it to you. Look at that, can, you can smooth it out like a little mirror. And um, let me show you what that looks like and then that'll be about all for today. But I thought you guys might like a quick view of gallium, which is really fun. There's also wood's metal and a few other metals that are fun to play with that are liquid too. I think wood's metals, the metal is reasonably non-toxic, or maybe it's field's metal. One of the two of them is really nasty and you don't want to touch it because it has, I think, cadmium or something horrifying in it like that. But the other one I think is safe. But look them up first, don't take my word for it. Gallium's reasonably safe and you can have lots of fun with it and play. And if you're a teacher, by the way, it's a great alternative to mercury if you want to show your students and you're worried that one of them might just stick their finger right in it all of a sudden. It like won't hurt them the way mercury will. So let's look at it quickly under the microscope before we finish. Oh, by the way, in case you're curious, it's not radioactive. I checked. At 200 times magnification, you can see the aluminum on the left and the gallium on the right the discoloration is caused by the microscope. See that bubble reacting to wind? That is a bubble of gallium. It's slowly reacting with the aluminum, making an alloy. You can see the trails where it's already passed as it rolled across the aluminum. See what it left behind? Gallium aluminum alloy. Looking in closer, I believe this might be 400 times magnification. You can see crystals. Now this is time sped up, but if you look carefully at the crystals, you'll see slight movement. The crystals are actually growing, just ever so slight movement to them. You might need to play it back a few times to see it. Let's zoom in. This is actually only 200 times magnification, but look, you can see the crystals growing. This is the second best view I got of this whole thing. See the crystals growing? Look at that. It's not really crystals exactly. It's an alloy, but it's sort of crystalline. Um, now look, you can see that a little better. That is the alloy. This is, this is time sped up, but look at that. The alloy is forming as the two metals meet together. Isn't that amazing? Wow. And for those of you who think that gloves are a bad idea, do you see what's on my hand right there? Gallium. Oops, if I can keep it in focus. That is gallium right in the end of my hands. Not a big deal, but it would have been on my skin. 
and then my fingernails all over the place. But luckily I wore gloves 